I would like to show you how you can create white caps by blotting with a paper towel. First though, we have to establish just where we want the waves to be. Uh, in my picture, I'm going to put in a piece of tape that will represent the top of the water, the top of the ocean. And it's down in here that we'll have our white caps. But I don't want my white caps coming directly at me. What I want to do is set up a pattern that is more diagonal than horizontal. So I'm going to put in a few lines in here just to guide the direction of the white caps as they come into the shore. I don't have to follow these lines exactly, but more or less the angle of the lines. All right, now the first thing I'll do is paint a graded wash from sap green mixed with a touch of raw sienna in the foreground. through cobalt blue in the distance. I'm using a two inch hog bristle brush for this job. So I want the water to be warmer and greener up close. Now, as soon as this is laid down, I want to take a paper towel, grab it by the corner, and roll it into a rope. Now I'm going to blot the paper to create the impression of white caps on the waves coming in. Of course, up close, the waves will be larger and further apart, of course. And as I go into the distance, the waves get smaller and closer together. Once I've done that, I let it dry. The next step is to establish the line of the waves that will connect these light patches up. And I'm going to do that with a pencil. But you have to realize that uh, what happens with most waves is as they break, they drop in height. So the wave that's in between, for example, will actually be a bit higher than the actual white section. This will act as a bit of a guide for me. Now, as this wave is coming over, it's creating shadow on that side of the wave or this side of the wave and I'm going to paint that in with a another brush again this is a mixture of the the green the green and the blue carefully paint around the bottom of the the foam And then with a, another hog hair brush, small one, just fade that out forward. Now, into that wetness, I can carry some of those, that movement, or suggest movement with a few brush strokes for the wave coming in. If I go into the dry area, I create a dry brush effect of uh, laciness in the, in the waves. Once I've done one wave, then I move on and do the one behind it. Every wave does not have to go completely across the paper. Now, where this wave comes down, I could carry a little bit of it down and contrast the top of the white cap in front. Move on to the next wave.
little bit darker. It in here. Now, not only can you add paint to create these uh, wave marks, but you could also use just plain water. This is a flat synthetic brush, and I can sweep that on and drop in bits of water when the paper is damp, and it leaves a light explosion of color or in the color. As we get further and further back, we're not so concerned with a whole lot of detail. What we really want to do is establish the line of the waves and the contrast for the white caps. If the eye sees detail up front, it will assume that there's detail in the back as well. Also, as I go further and further back, I want to lean more and more towards the cobalt blue. Just, to be just a bit lighter. When I get back to this point, it's really just a matter of suggesting a little bit of texture in the water, in the waves. Once I have uh, the feeling that I want, then I just let this dry. Then I can work on what's above the water at the background. I think that I will Darken up underneath here just a little bit more on this front wave. All right, we'll let that dry. The next step is painting in the sky. And to do that, I'm simply going to remove the masking tape that I had on that limited the water and move it down the page. So that it now protects the top of the water. First of all, I want to give myself a little bit of sky here before I put in the headland. And I think that ought to do it, and I'll let that dry before I proceed with the headland. And now I add the land. And perhaps a sailboat or two. While I'm waiting for this to dry, 
I may as well add in a few boulders or stones along the shoreline here. Just to add a little bit of interest, a few things in the water in the foreground. By softening the bottom edges of those slightly, it gives the impression that they're in the water. And now I remove my tape. As you can see, I had a little bit of a run back here, but I can now block that. It's not a major problem. And that finishes my picture. Painting water doesn't have to be hard. It's just a matter of learning a few techniques, such as blotting, masking out, fading out, and by all means, working with large brushes, such as the two-inch hog bristle brush. The rest is just practice. From that practice, you'll soon learn when to move quickly and when to let things dry. Now available on DVD. Try these techniques yourself at home whenever you wish. The extended version of today's workshop is now available to order on DVD from the Painting and Drawing channel. For further information and to order your copy, go to www.paintingdrawingchannel.com.